Sin all I see is a battle You see my victory What I see is a mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Come on, let's all sing. So when I fight, so when I fight, I fight on my knees with my head lifted high. And oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet. I sing through the night, and oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus is nothing impossible for you. Come on. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. Whoa. When all I see is the cross, God, you see the empty tomb. Yeah. It's so weird I find. Right on my knees With my hands in the eyes And oh God The battle belongs to you And every tear I lay in your feet I sing through the night And oh God The battle belongs to you We're all singing Almighty Fortress. In Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. In Almighty Fortress, you gon' be for us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. In Almighty Fortress, you gon' be for us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, fight on my knees with my hands lifted high, and oh, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay in your feet I'll see through the night And oh, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay in your feet I'll see through the night And oh, the battle belongs to you I like starting with this song because this talks about how the Lord goes before us for the battles that we face because the, the thing is every single one of us are fighting battles today 
And the Lord goes before us, and he is an almighty fortune. Amen. And it says nothing can stand against the power of our God. So we're going to sing the bridge one more time. And I want you to try to just sing that with all of your heart. Just, just really lean into that, those words there, that nothing can stand against the power of our God. Not one thing. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You in every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty force. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty force. Come on, just sing it out. Uh. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. And nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress. You don't be for us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power. Again, good morning and welcome to church. Welcome to church. All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue our worship through with our tithe and offering. So if you do have that, why don't we go ahead and get it out and let's all sing. Excuse me, let's all pray together. This is my tithe. It will do what God says it will do. As I try my Lord, he will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that cannot be contained. I declare at this moment, I am surrounded by God's blessings. I'm the seed of Abraham, and what God declared to him, you shall not lack any good thing, applies to me today. In accordance with his word, I will walk in his divine favor and prosperity. No weapons formed against me or my family will succeed, and everything I put my hand forward to do will prosper. I thank God for his mighty power, provision, and plan. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we welcome you into our service this morning. We ask for your Holy Spirit just to, to be on every single person here today. And allow us, God, to just focus on you, to be able to put our hearts and minds towards you, God. We pray over these tithes and the offerings today in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody here said, Amen. All right, it's testimony time. Who's got a testimony this morning? I see a hand raised. Want to come on up? Hey, Dave, would you mind giving the... Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Mishael, and uh, this weekend I went to youth camp, and it was, <laughs> and it was, it was huge for me because uh, 
first I thought it, I thought it was just like, hey man, it's just gonna be camp. It's just gonna be like games and whatever. But <clears throat> it, it drains you physically and emotionally. So, like, I'm I'm just gonna say God did a lot of things that weekend, and it just it was it was huge because. I, I mean, I decided to give my life to Christ. I want to be a youth pastor and whatever. So uh, he, he does amazing things in life. So all I got to say is put your faith and everything into God, and he, he will, he'll be there for you. Hey Amen. That is awesome. Congratulations. Good morning. Um, so my son went too, and he said his favorite part was chapel, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, if y'all were here a couple of weeks ago, um, I um, did a little confession about the Holy Spirit working with me on my speed, telling me to slow down. And um, I know it's been, it, I mean, God is just crazy about this too. He is not giving up, and he is serious. Um, so when, as my daughter was growing up um, and getting older, and now my son, you know, we tell him, you got to be home at a certain time. And, you know, my husband and I are not late people. If you're 10 minutes, if you're not 10 minutes early, you're already late. So, you know, you'd be home by 10 o'clock. Well, they'd get home at 10.01, and I would be like, no, it doesn't matter. 10.01, 10.30, doesn't matter. You're late, you're late. So, you know, now you, now you get in trouble, right? So the other day, Joey and I, my youngest, he was in service, which he never is, but he happened to be in service that day. And um, so we're driving to Brighton, and... I set my cruise, and he just was like, wow, you can do that? That's so cool. You don't have to push on the gas. I'm like, no, I have to use the cruise because I'm a speeder. So I set my cruise, and I've been doing very well at that. Well, I I set my cruise. I'm headed the back roads, you know, and and I set it, and it says 56. And I'm like, oh, that's good. And what do you think that I heard from the Holy Spirit? doesn't matter if you're one mile over or ten miles over, you're speeding. Like, he is not giving up on this. So I clicked my little speedometer down and ride at 55. So we go to Joey's baseball game, and we leave, and we're, we're just leaving right in Brighton, so it's busy. I'm in the flow of traffic, and Joey goes over, Mom, speed limit's 45. And I'm like, I, I'm like at 48, 49. I'm like, I know, but there's a guy, you know, right behind me, and I'm in the flow of traffic. He goes, well, just put that red light on in the back and tell him you're slowing down. I'm like, well, that's my break. I'm not going to do a brake check. I said, I'm just going to let my foot off the gas, you know, and so I got it going again. So we're driving a little further, and I kind of go over a hill, and I start creeping up, and he goes, Speeds up, Mom. Nobody's behind you. I'm like, thank you, Joey, for keeping me honest. And he gives me a fist bump, you know. So seriously, like, the the cool thing was is I said, Joey, do you remember why I can't speed? Well, because God told you not to. But why did he tell me not to? Well, because it was wrong. I know, but why is it wrong? So I really got to talk to him about authority, about I have authority that I have to obey to just like you, I am your authority, you know, and so you have to obey your parents and adults in your life, and so that was just a great, I mean, the Holy Spirit still, like, yeah, checking me every minute, but um, I got to witness from my son about the authority and how I am submitted to that, just as you are submitted, so it was just like, okay, God, I get the point here, so it was great. So this is just God. I'm a speeder also. Big speeder. And so I got very convicted when you t- gave that testimony before. And so the other day I was coming home from work and I set my cruise control. I get on Tower Road, you know, I'm past Tower, I set my cruise control. Well, then I find myself putting my foot on the gas. And pretty soon I'm going like 85. And God convicted me and he said, Did you set your cruise control for a reason? And I was like, Oh man, Lori. I'm blaming you, <laughs> but praise God, I'm, I'm going to not speed, so thanks. Morning, Journey Church family. Um, I sort of want to piggyback off of Misha. Um, this week at youth camp, and he is not joking, like legitimately, we go from 7 a.m. till midnight for uh, 10 days, 15 days, I don't know. How many ever days it was, it was a long time. <laughs> um, but... The most amazing thing I've witnessed is our youth just blossom and open and accept things from God um, that they sort of had already, but just the amount of opening up during chapel, during what we have, what we call it fam time. We get together as our youth group and we talk through some stuff. And our kids are hurting, guys. They're hurting. There's a lot of stuff going on just in general. 
and they're all really pressing into God, and we're, we're trying to lead them into that direction, and it is so amazing to watch these kids just say, you know what, God's got me, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this not only as a youth group family, but as a church family, and you guys keep um, sending your kids, keep giving them those opportunities, because it is so amazing to watch them grow in this. Thank you. Amen. John and I will share pictures and a video and stuff next week. Oh, Chrisley wants something to say. She's up here. Um, Because we wanted time to, like, gather ourselves and not have to do it yesterday because it was an exhausting week. So we kind of took the day off. Um, But I wanted to share something else that I wanted to share, like, the last time I was here, too, but we didn't have testimony time. Um, Chris probably remembers. At least I hope she does. Remember how, like, Hazel had a really bad clogged tear duct, both of them? And then when she went in at nine months, she hadn't grown enough. And she's a very small baby. But they were like, man, she's really fallen off her growth curve. So if she doesn't maintain and she loses anything else, we're going to do a hormone test on her. Because she could have a growth defect because her father had a growth defect when he was younger, right? And, like, her starting out in the NICU and all this stuff, I was just like, I thought that you already healed her, God. Like, was honestly my words, right? And I'm like, okay, well, we're just going to pray for her to be healed again. And we told you guys we were praying over her at night. And then all of a sudden, I shared this already, like her eye was just not goopy again. And neither of her eyes have ever been goopy again. Um, And I already shared that. But we took her to a doctor's appointment. um, And they were like, oh, yeah, she's, she's grown enough. She actually grew more than she did. So we're not concerned about having a growth defect. And she's perfectly fine. So... So I went to the camp this year, as long as me and the other people, and I was with friends, and I was like, well, we were in worship. I didn't want to put my hands up to make it look, quote unquote, weird, and I didn't want to know what people would think of me, but then we had this testimony of forever freedom, and um, you did a prayer with your youth pastor, and it was like forever letting go of something. And I'd forever let go of my past with Amanda in a prayer. And then we went to our fam time, and Amanda kind of put out my story. And everybody was in tears with everybody else's story. I mean, that dust was kind of bad and all. But um, I just, it wasn't after that testimony, I could go into worship and lift my hands and give everything out. And... um, I have finally let go of all of that, and I haven't been the happiest. But after that, I have never felt the same. And I've been happy, and I've smiled, and can finally say I am my own person without that past. So that was my daughter. A lot of you know our story on what we went through with her birth father. She came home from, she didn't want to go to camp at first. She just wanted to stay home and work. And Amanda goes, no, you're going to camp. And John said, no, you're going to camp. Sorry, I'm shaking. I said, no, you're going to camp. She came home on Friday night. She was like 180 degree different person. She's told me stories. She's ready to go back tomorrow. And I'm so blessed. We are in the process of changing her last name so she can let the past go. And we're just praying that her birth father will sign off so that we can change her last name so that the past will not live with her anymore. Lots of really, really good stuff. Anybody else? on up. Yeah, I was uh, listening to all these testimonies and I went to uh, camp one time. It's, they called it an afterglow, what they called it back. It's back when I was 17 years ago. 
But anyway, uh, you know, I've watched this church right here. I haven't been coming here long. And I've watched the, what would you say, uh, the leadership of this church. It's a it's, it's good deal. And I felt a Holy Spirit here, you know. And John, Paul, Dusty, and uh, whoever else is coordinating these uh, deals for the kids, or the young people, I'll say, that's... That, it's not even words to express it, you know. Only the Holy Spirit can tell, tell you that. And like a, the lady was saying about the authority, we all got to come under authority. Even in the Bible, it says you got to have government to... If we didn't, we'd all be killing one another, you know, and blow it, and then us be left. But you gotta have it. And uh, I think we'll give Dusty and everybody in this church a hand, a round of applause for trying to do the right thing, you know. And they've got a lot of programs going, you know, that I hadn't even, not, I hadn't even seen yet. And the Lord put me here for some reason in this church, you know, and I don't know why, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> Amen. Why don't we all stand? We'll keep worshiping. I 
worship you, yeah, I worship you. Come on, sing it together. You are way making a miracle work, but a promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, way make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. 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 Stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop, you never stop, no. Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop You never stop, yeah Even when I don't see that you're working You never stop, you never stop. You 
never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working Never stop, you never stop never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, never stop you never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You know, I think it's just like we, I think we were saying last week that if you maybe had stopped feeling God's presence and, you know, Pastor Dusty says something about, you know, just because you, doesn't, you don't feel it doesn't negate God's presence that it's actually there. Because right now, even right now, God's working in your life. He's working in my life. He's right here with us. And right now what we're doing is we're singing truth when it says, and true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. And we're, we're singing truth right now. So just sing this with me. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see that you working, even when I don't feel that you working, you never stop. Never stop working. Even when I don't see that you working, even when I don't feel that you working, you never stop. Come on, just sing this out now. darkness my God that is who you As I walk now 
far through the valley Let your love rise above every fear Like a sun shape in the shadow yeah. In my weakness your glory appears I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me again? Cause all I want is all you
So I want to read something from Psalm 28. In Psalm 28, verse 7, it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to Him in song. So if you want to know why we sing, that's one of those reasons. So that we can give thanks to Him in song today. And so we're going to sing one more song. And this is a song where you can let go of those things. Like the young lady who was up here and she was talking about how she was letting go of her past. This song is run to the Father. As we run to the Father, we can let go of those things that hinder us, those things that so easily entangle us, as Paul would say. And set our hearts and our minds on the prize. And that prize has a name his name is Jesus.
all needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again I run to the Father I fall in the grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart found a surgeon My soul found a friend So I run to the Father again and again God's got a message for somebody here today, and I wish I knew who because I would love to pray with you. So uh, Dusty asked me to pray this morning, and so I look through, you know, I tell you this every time, it's just so cool how God works. I just know the Spirit is here today. He tells me that He would like me to pray, and so I start looking through verses, and I start reading and, you know, praying, God, what do you want me to say today? What does somebody need to hear? And then Paul gets up here. And I don't know how many verses are actually in the Bible, but he picked the very verse that God gave him. I mean, that's not coincidence, people. There's a message here today. From, starting from God goes before you, the first song we sang, to I'm not enough unless you come to this, running to the Father. There's somebody here that needs to hear this today. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't, you don't have to clean up. You don't have to know anything. If there's something that you're supposed to be doing and you're going forward, run to it. God's already there. He prepares your steps ahead and he's there. Nothing surprises him. He is, as that verse said, he is our shield. He's our strength. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. So trust in God and run to him because he will help you. My heart leaps for joy. So after you trust in him, then he helps you. Then your heart will leap for joy and you will have praises. You will sing praises. It doesn't say you have to go and do all this other stuff. You trust in him. He helps you. You sing praises. It's that easy. I know it's not easy, but it's that simple. Let's put it that way. So if there's somebody here, I would love to pray with you. Um, if, you if somebody's struggling or we'll have prayer partners later. But please don't, don't let today go by without praying about that. Because the God's already there. He's waiting for you to go through this, to carry you through whatever you're going through. So let's just pray and thank God that he's so great and so amazing. Father, thank you that you are our refuge. Thank you that you are our strength, that you are my shield. God, you are my provider, my sustainer. Father, thank you for that, that there's nowhere that I can go that you're not already there, that you're not already preparing for me. God, you know my heart. You know every heart in here, Father. And I pray that you would open up the dark areas in our hearts. Let the light shine in those areas. Because, God, we know when the light shines, darkness cannot occupy the same space. Father, thank you that your word confirms to us this message that you had today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you, that you spoke to me and you spoke to Paul. You spoke to this amazing worship team and everybody in here. God, and you had a message for somebody. Father, I pray that that person has boldness to step forward, to pray, to go through knowing, God, that you are the help. That we trust in you, you help us, and then we get to sing praises, Father. Thank you for that word today, Lord. Father, I just pray over Pastor Dusty, God, that you would anoint him with words that would just ring true in our hearts, that would make us feel differently than we came in this morning. God, we would be bold and strong and and inspired by this word that Pastor Dusty will bring from us, to us, from you, Father. Thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.